Hello everybody, Doc Scanlon here. How's everybody doing today? I'm just gonna make it a little movie about our progress on our archtop guitar. Tell you a couple things that we're doing differently. Uh, and just uh, some people are interested in this. I don't know why. I am, but I'm the one that's doing it. So I understand that. We uh, have carved the top. We have carved the back. We've glued the uh, back onto the sides, bent the sides, glued the back onto the sides. There's the sides. There's the there's the back. It's it's a little rough around the edges because we haven't cleaned that up yet. But uh, there's that. So we have a box. And the next thing will be this top that will be glued on. And then we'll have the then we'll have the box. Now I can't glue the top on yet because I have to put my labels in. And I'm having the issues with my labels. I know it's silly, but to do my labels, I had to get the right Japanese paper. And then I had to get the right nib for the pen, for the signature. And I'm still experimenting with that. Then I had to get a right pen holder. Now I got to get the oblique pen attachment that goes to it. And now do I have to take a course in calligraphy and penmanship so that my signature looks nice? I don't know. Well, how far am I going to go with this? Well, I'm going to go far enough so it looks not like somebody just scribbled it in there. I don't, I can't do that. So I got to have the, la I got the label design. I can print it out now. So that's all done. Two labels, one for each. You'll see when, when I get that far, I'll show it to you. But um, there's going to be some handwritten things in there. The name, I'm not going to have a serial number. Each guitar is going to be a named, and it's a female name, and that's how I want it. And that's how I'm going to identify these guitars with the name. And then I have to write that name in, and I'm going to sign my name and put the date in. And I want to make sure that's all done properly, and, and not just as an afterthought. We want to have every detail be very important. And I know it's maybe a little obsessive and, and maybe a little extreme, but... Uh, in my humble opinion, you don't you don't create something that is um, something special, and not to something to boast about, but just because you have a, an inner desire to 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 create something for prosperity. That's not right. For posterity. <laughs> Sorry about that. For posterity, and and just for your own personal satisfaction. I mean, you can. You can shovel off the walk and you can leave half of it there and the neighbor trips and, and slips and breaks their neck on it. Or you can shovel it all the way off properly. So there you go. Is that a, is that a good analogy? I don't know. So anyway, we have this pretty much ready to put together. And there's going to be binding around here. There's a little decorative strip there. And on this, this end, there's a cavity out here for the neck. And the neck's going to be bolted into the body. We're not gluing any necks into bodies. We can go into that. We're not gluing any necks. No, no, no. So anyway, here's our neck. And our neck is uh, a lovely piece of maple. Let's show you the maple here. We got some lovely maple here. I don't know if you can see it, but it, it dances a little bit for you. Pretty, pretty, pretty. So anyway, there's our neck. There's the peg head. I've just got the, the overlay taped on. The... Um, I have to put the binding up here and I'm having the devil of a time getting these angles perfect because it's this whole thing is at an angle. So it's complicated geometry for my time. Oh, here we are, my tiny brain. And uh, so here's the neck. And I want to mention a little bit about the neck while I got it here. The neck's going to be bolted on. There's a, there's a piece that goes through here, steel piece that goes through here. There's going to be a screw that goes through here and it's going to be adjusted with this little, you see these two, they have two holes. We have a little hole here, and we have a little hole here. And there's going to be two tools that go in there. And when the screw comes from the inside of the body, comes through here, we're going to tighten it with this, this tool that comes out here. See, you can't reach your hand in an archtop guitar. There's no big sound hole there. So this has to all be done from the outside. So we're going to tighten that screw that's going to screw through here and be anchored inside. We're going to tighten that there, and that'll tighten the neck to the body, pivoting up here on a piece and pivoting down here on another screw. And we're gonna adjust that with, through this hole here. So I have two screws, one to tighten in the center and one to adjust at the bottom. So if you follow me, 
when we want to adjust the neck, that's very important to be able to adjust the neck. We don't want to adjust the bridge. We don't want any adjustable bridges. We don't want to have problems with neck sets. So we have to take the to a repairman for hundreds of dollars and, 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 and weeks maybe before you get the guitar back because you glued the stinking neck to the body. You welded it. It's like welding the engine to your car. No, you don't do that. Screws are a marvelous invention. So anyway, we, um, we adjust this bottom screw. So pivots up here at the top like this. And depending on the length of this screw down here, when you tighten it, pulls up against that screw down there and this pivot point up here and you get your angle where well, you can adjust the angle down here and uh, adjust the angle of the neck to the body. Simple. A neck set in 15 minutes. Your grandma can do it. No other way. Sorry. All right. Does it affect the sound? No. <sighs> Oy vey. Does a, does, a, does a T bar and a Martin guitar neck, because they didn't have the patent for adjustable uh, truss rod that Gibson had developed, does that affect the sound? Oy vey! Does, does the, does the uh, truss rod affect the sound? Does the screw affect the sound? Does, does anything affect, does the tuners affect the sound? All that metal in the, in the guitar? Yeah, it all affects the sound. About this much. So. What if the effects of the sound of some of these things, some of these myths that people have put out there that, that, that a, a glued on neck sounds better than a, than a, than a bolted on neck. What, what if we found out scientifically and, and by double blinded test that the bolt on necks actually sound better to most people? <laughs> it may be. They found out, you know, they found out on electric guitars. So everybody thought, well, you, that, that fender idea where you bolt on the neck, you're gonna lose your sustain. Well, they did scientific studies and they found out that the bolt-on necks had more sustain. Hey, it doesn't make any sense to me, but, uh, you know, I mean, let's get, let's get serious about some of this stuff. So anyway, that's where we are on this arch top guitar. And now we're, uh, we're working on the beginnings of the flat top guitars. So that's, that, that's another story. That's another movie. So I won't make this too long, but I thought I would show uh, this top is carved all carved from a solid wood, and the back is carved from a solid wood. It originally was about that thick, and it was all carved to that thick. You could tell, oops, excuse me, that's not very thick, that's very light. But originally that was, oh, let me show you one more thing. We have what I call the tone rim. Now the tone rim is you'll notice that there's there's lining. Yeah, let me show you close. You show you, you'll notice that there's lining down here. That's made out of mahogany. It's very flexible. All that does is increase the gluing area surface so that when you glue the back to the side, you have a large a, a bigger surface so they're not as apt to separate someday, which is what you don't want, of course. Now on the top, why didn't I use this for the top? because the top, I want to this to serve that purpose, but I also want this lining up here to serve another purpose. And that is to inhibit the vibrations of the top from leaking, I'll use that word kind of loosely, leaking down through the sides into the back and vibrating the sides. And those vibrations that go into the sides, if I had a flexible, and plus if it's flexible, these sides, if, if this was flexible up here, I could take these sides and just bend them in, no problem. I can't bend them in, they're solid. And what that does, what that does is the periphery that, uh, of, of, the, of the top is glued to this very dense wood. This is called Cadillacs, I believe. It's, if they call it Mexican ebony, I believe I've got that right. Very dense, very heavy very, uh, it's, you're not going to vibrate this very much. So that's the idea. We don't want to vibrate that. It's like a banjo, uh, a banjo tone ring and a banjo, uh, you know, banjo tone ring is, is, is big. Banjo rim is thick and uh, they don't want to, they don't, w w w the heavier you have this within reason, I mean, you, I guess you can make it out of concrete or a solid steel. Uh, that's ridiculous, but we don't want any 
vibrations as much as possible to escape the top. Because if we can keep the vibrations on the top, the top is the membrane that makes our sound. If the sides contribute an infinitesimal amount and the back contributes a tiny amount, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a little bit, but not very much, that's not the end of the world. But if the top is flopping around here and it's not and it's vibrating these other parts. These other parts are not, especially the sides, are not sound producing parts. So they'll vibrate, but they won't produce sound. I mean, you can vibrate things that, that, that don't sound. That's why you have a large, thin area for a top. And like a speaker, you have a speaker cone. The speaker, the part that makes all the sound, is very thin. And you have, um, you have uh, the same principle with a guitar. The top is thin, relatively thin. And when you excite that and vibrate that, and, and, and depending on the type of wood as well, depending on the braces underneath, depending on how it's carved, if it's a carved top, uh, these, factor, these all factor into the sound. But there's some general parameters, and one of them is you don't make the top too thick, you don't make the top too thin, you don't make the braces too thick, you don't make the braces too thick, thin. You don't make the body size too small, you don't make the body size too large. So over the years we come to know kind of what our parameters are. As long as we stay in those parameters, we're gonna have a, an acceptable instrument. Now, 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 not everybody might like this guitar as much as the, the second one we make, which is, they're all gonna come out a little different. So, but they're all gonna be good. None of them are going to sound like they're full of water. So we want this, this tone rim, this very dense rim to go around here, to hold the top solid so that it can vibrate in the center section where it's making the sound and not vibrate the rest of it where we're just wasting the vibrations. So that's the theory behind that. And um, that's, that's, as my dad used to say, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. So there you go. I'm stuck with it. All right. That's it. I hope you all have a lovely day. Thanks for watching. And uh, let me know what you think about all this mess. And I'm happy to, uh, to uh, um, if you want to uh, uh, have any criticisms or any things that could help us out or uh, any objections, uh, any differences of opinion. Oh, I love that. I love criticism. So that's how we learn. So don't worry about hurting my feelings. If you have an issue, or you have a question, I love to uh, uh, talk to people. I love to hear people's comments and I would be happy to hear from you. So we're gonna keep going as we do this with the flat top guitars, the arch top guitars, and even with uh, our, our ukulele project, which is gonna be down the road somewhere. So God bless you all. Hope you have a lovely day. Ta-ta.